Luke 8, 11. The word says, now the parable is this, the seed, the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear, then the devil comes and take away the word out of their hearts, unless they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who they hear and receive the word with joy, and with have no root who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now, but the ones that fell on the good ground, talking about good ground today, are those who haven't heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it, bear fruit with peace. With peace. We're going to talk today about fruit of peace. No, fruit of patience. Patience. Because a lot of people are lacking patience in this place. They get a little bit of word, and then they run. And they think that God is right behind them, and they, they got his back. But God is not finished with them yet. It takes time. I'll give you a good example. When David was called to be king of Israel, he didn't automatically become king like that. He had to go through some stuff to get to become king, because when he got into that position, the things that was coming against him were weaker than the things that he had already experienced to get to where his position was. You know, he had to climb big mountains. He had to run, run from Saul. Saul was trying to kill him, and he couldn't touch him because he had the anointing. But, you know, David knew these things and was wise enough to know that he had to be patient. He had to endure. He had to go through some trials and temptations. He had to go. He, and even when he got in position, he made some mistakes. And he still had to learn how to hold on. Because he had a relationship with somebody that was real. And somebody that he knew that had all controls in his hands. Amen? Amen. We have to cooperate to be either still or when we have to move. We have to cooperate with it, just like the children of Israel. When God was in, in with the cloud and with the fire, when, he, when they saw the, when it was moving, they moved. When it stood still, they stayed. They waited upon him. Now, I know they was mumbling and complaining. That's when they was out there for 40 years. It held them out, out through, and only two made it, right? But they still had sense enough not to leave the presence of God when he was there. That's one thing I learned about total freedom. I know the presence of God dwells here. God ordained us to be here for a specific time and season. And if we leave before a season, he's not finished and completed what needs to be done in you so that when you do go out, you'll be complete. Because even, even in, in the completeness, you're still going to have problems. Amen? Because if you don't have problems, then you don't need them, do you? Amen? The spirit of limitation is attached to compromise. That stops the quality of your achievements, which God is trying to bring through you. Because he's trying to bring the quality in you so that others can see. See him in you. The perfect quality. That you achieve what you started and you knew how to complete it to the end. To the end. Anybody can start something, but take special people to finish it. That's when you complete the whole process. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 7. Verse number 8. A very small scripture, but it has a lot of meaning. It says, the end of things is better than its beginning. The patience in spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. Patience in the spirit is better than the proud. 
you either patient and humble or prideful, not willing to endure. And one thing we have to learn is to endure. Endure brings maturity. It makes you grow. It makes you withstand the, the things that come against you. Because I'll tell you, if you don't endure it in, in Christ, the enemy has you then. Because you can't do it here when you go out in the world. There's too many things out in the world that keep you busy. Because when you get in the world, the world's always wanting something. You got to do this. 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 And then you find out you're lacking time with God. You're lacking time to seek his presence. You're lacking time to do the things that he called you to do. You might think you're doing what he's called, but are you really? Are you doing the way that you want it done? Or are you doing it according to how he want it done? Because if you do it according to the way he want it done, it's not going to feel good. Because it's going to come against the flesh. Because your flesh ain't going to want to do it. That's how come the spirit wars against the flesh. Because the spirit, man, is trying to outgrow the flesh so that you can do the things that the spirit is calling for you to do. Amen? That's how come there's a battle within. Within. Not on the outside. A lot of people think it's on the outside. But you got the battle within you first. So that you can overcome self first. So that you can do what he's calling you to do. Amen? Let's get, go to James 1. James 1. We all go through that battle, don't we? Hmm? Have God ever told you to go and forgive somebody? And you don't want to? Come on. Come on. Or God told you to love somebody? And you don't want to? How about this one? God called you to help somebody. And that person did something against you. And you don't want to. But you know he told you to do it. And now oppression is upon you because you don't want to do it. And you're fighting against yourself and everything. Until you do it, you got free. Until you let go of it, you got free. So God, God always wants to test us. He's going to see if you're really his. If you're going to be willing to do what he's asking you to do. Because you've got to understand something. This is a relationship. It's just like me, like me and my little son, Isaiah. I tell Isaiah, come, let's go and eat. See, I learned a lot from my little two-year-and-a-half-old. I'm learning a lot from him. <laughs> you've got to understand something. We're supposed to be like childlike, right? So when I have to discipline him, he get mad for a moment, but he comes right back. And he calls my name, Daddy. And it blesses me to hear my son call my name. How much more it blesses God to hear us call his name. When we're going through things. Not shunning him away because we're going through it, but to call him so he come near and comfort us and guide us and show us how to do what we need to get done. Amen? Yeah, Isaiah, is a, he's a prime example for my help. That's my helpmate. <laughs> and my wife, too, trust me. <laughs> but Isaiah, man, he gets me going. And I learn from I watch him. And by watching him, when he's crying and he's going through stuff, I say, that's me. That's me when I'm crying and acting up on God. And he say, are you finished yet? <laughs> really, are you finished? <laughs> He's patient with me. He's patient. He ain't killed me. Oh, he killed me one way, but he didn't kill me out the physical. I mean, out the physical. But he's patient. And we have to learn how to have patience with each other. Especially married ones. You got to be patient with your wife. And wife, you have to be patient with your husbands. <laughs> it goes both ways because we're learning each other. And that makes a completion of the body to become one. Amen? I'm talking to married folks now. <laughs> Amen? Okay, James 1, verse 2. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. 
Knowing the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give to all liberally and without reproach, and will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubt. Doubting, For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, we're going to go through various trials, and we'll produce something, and it will produce, it, it will produce his image and character. That's what it will reduce going through trials. You'll start getting his character. You start looking like his image. You start carrying Christ in you. Because, of, because, you know, the word says that Jesus loved to see us die. Because through his death, we come alive. And if we live, then that means then all things are possible for those who believe, right? Where your faith will be connected to the other side. We got to have a connection to the other side so that that faith will come in and can move us when it seems like what we see is not real anymore. Amen? Amen. And, will not move, and it will not move you. People are willing to settle with anything that get the, then get the best from God. Patience brings death to self. That's what it brings. It brings death so that you can live. You know, being here so, so many years, I had to learn patience. I had to learn patience through different seasons because if I had let go, I would not know where I've been because I know my old behavior, my old man would destroy me because I was so much in sin. A lot of people don't know my past where I came from. I don't know where your past came from, where you came from. But I know something that Satan had a grip on us. And he had a destination for us to destroy us. And it wasn't for Christ to lead me into a place for freedom. I would not know where I would be. I would not know where my children would be. Because you got to understand something. The curses come down the family line. And Satan likes to put curses on us when we don't even know we got cursed. So we have to keep, keep those things broken each and every day so they don't come back. So we can stay free. That's the main purpose is to be what? Free. Because when you're free, you can express freedom to someone else. And what you have, you can give. If you don't have it, you can't share it. You might can speak it, but you're still bound up. But the fullness of freedom is not when you're around people and when you're not around people because you're being real to the Father because he knows everything in you. He knows everything. He knows when you're willing to surrender. He knows when you're willing not to surrender. And he knows where the touch, he knows where the touch is at where we don't want to be touched. Have anybody was like, don't go there. Somebody say something, like, don't go there. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> but he'll go there. <laughs> he'll go there. Amen. Uh, let's go to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. As Pastor said, Hebrew. Hebrew. Hebrews 10, verse 35. And it says here, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have, not need, you, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. 
How many want to receive the promise? The promise that he's spoken into you. Without patience, you're, you're cast, you cast away the confidence in God. And the confidence is hope which produces faith. So now you're connected to the other side. Because in the patience, you're, you're hoping on the things that evidence of things hope for, because that's faith. So you're connecting right there. And that faith means, Lord, I'll wait for you. I don't, I don't understand what's going on, but I'll wait on it. I know you're going to complete what you started in me, so I'll wait on it. I know you started this. I didn't start this because I know that I was not trying to get your attention until you called upon me. And then I called upon you, and you answered me. Now you're showing me great and mighty things that I never ex- thought I would ever experience. Trust me, I never ex- knew I would have so many brothers and sisters. Because when I was in the, in the world, I felt lonely. Anybody ever had oppression? Anybody ever been through oppression? You have to put your hands up. Anybody felt doubt in their lives? Fear? Stress? Anger? Bitterness? Hatred? Malice? Envy, strife, all those things that came from another voice that wasn't producing patience, it was producing anxiousness. Anxious for everything, especially getting that dope. I had, it ne- I had to get it yesterday. While I'm sleeping, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, I have the dope, and I'm still trying to figure out how to get more. Oh, and nobody been there but me? <laughs> This is an addiction program too, right? <laughs> we were addicts at one time, right? Do you remember where you came from? If it wasn't drugs, it was sex, music. It was something we was addicted to that had us calling us, and we ran for it. Like, uh, like New Jack City back in the day when Chris Rock said, it keeps calling me. He didn't know it was a demon. He didn't know. At that time, I didn't know. All I know is I needed it now. And we did anything to get to it. Hurt anybody to get to it because all I cared was how to take care of me. Nobody else. Now, the great reward and patience is what? Dying. Dying to what? Self. You do the will of God and receive the promise. You do the will of God, you will receive the promise. Let me say that again. You do the will of God, you will receive the promise. It will come when he's ready to bring it to you, not when you think that you deserve it. Amen? We must continue to stand and go through. It must continue. It has to be consistency all the time. Because when we stop the consistency, we're moving backwards. Amen. Everybody okay? Let's go to Psalms 27. The word says, verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have declared of the Lord, that will I speak. Seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now, the, the house of the Lord is in you today. We are that temple that he dwells in. So wherever we stand at is holy because he lives in us. 
those who are pure of heart will see him. Amen? It says, to behold the beauty of the Lord, that means seeing him, right? And to, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon the rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifice of joy in his tabernacle. We did that today, didn't we? We gave him the joy of the Lord, right? We worship and praise him. We dance before him. We clap our hands and push back the enemy. We raise our hand to get filled. Amen? Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. So everybody concerned about the mama and daddy? God will take care of you. He'll take care of you when nobody else can. That relationship, you keep that relationship, he'll be with you. Even when you feel like he's not, he's there. You got to remember, when we was in sin, God was waiting for us. He protected us to get to where we needed to get to and blocked off everything of death that was trying to come upon us. He would not allow it to come. He said, that's mine. He said, I'm patient with it, and I'm waiting for the right time. Holy Spirit is right there like this, just waiting. He's looking to the Father saying, you ready yet? No, not yet, not yet. Wait till they call. And so that person called, bam! It comes. He's waiting. Just waiting. Just waiting. Patiently. And then when, when it's the right, the opportune time that he made, it happens. And no man can stop it. Nobody can stop it. That's the good thing about it. He's above all that. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord, and lead me in smooth paths. Because of my enemies, do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such has breathed out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had what? Believed. Those who believe will what? Follow that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Do you know what courage stands for? Be brave. Be brave. That means fight. Stand up. Set apart. Victory. How many want victory? You know, first, you know, I'd rather have victory in the spirit before I have victory in the things of the world, of the substance of the things of the world. Because I have the victory in the spirit, everything will come to me anyhow. So if I'm patient in the Lord, I'll wait for it. It'll, it'll come when it's time so that it will overcome me because he said that he won't give me no more that I can bear. A lot of us want stuff, and we're not even ready for it. Like some of the guys coming into the, the, the disciple program, I had a million dollars for each and every one. I couldn't give it to them because they're not, it will take them right back out on the street because their heart's not ready for it. Because the hearts are full of evil. It hasn't been purified. It hasn't been sanctified, set apart, so that it will be for the Lord, not for the world. It's not straddling the fence. Is it you going to be on the Lord's side or are you going to be on the devil's side? You can't be on both sides. You be on both sides, you guess what? You're on the devil's side. Period. And he shall strengthen what I said? Your heart. Because your heart needs to be in right position. Wait, I say, on the Lord. 
So he said it twice at the end. So that means that he is very serious about us waiting and being patient on him. He's very serious about that because you know why? Because he knows that if we're not patient, the enemy's going to come and intercede before him. And guess what? He has a louder voice than God does at times. He likes to make things and pretty it up so good that, you know, I'll put a good example. You could be riding down the street, and here comes a truck coming before you. Now, if that truck had on there something that, that had no interest in you, you wouldn't even pay no attention. But it has something that you desired that you wanted. You'll be like, oh, man, I wanted that. And it'll catch you. Because the enemy knows your desires. Because he put it there. So that we got to wait on the Lord so that our desires will turn into his desires. And that he will groom us. Groom us into the things that we need to become. It takes time. This thing doesn't happen overnight. Even today, God is still dealing with David with things that need to be groomed. Where I thought that there's things that was taken care of. No, there's another part of it. It's like pride. It's like a pie. You know how we're taught in school uh, how you take quarters and halves and everything else? Well, there's, there's a little piece of pride he took out, but he's dealing with some more. He's dealing with some more. So you can see what you're dealing with within yourself so that you can call upon them and ask for what? Help. Within your own self. Amen? Everybody okay? Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Let's go to Psalm 40 while we're here. He was, we, he's patient with us, so we need to be patient with him. We got to be patient with him. Because where else are we going to go? I don't know where I'm going to go. Where else am I going to go? I don't have nowhere else to. Every time I think about, okay, I'm leaving. Where am I going? <laughs> well, I guess I'm staying. Because <laughs> there's no place that he told me to go. I'm not going to be foolish enough to take myself somewhere that I ain't hear from God totally and got confirmation. Because he said there's safety, in, uh, uh, there's safety in counsel. And if there's a counsel that I go to and it's telling me one thing and I'm, not, and I'm doing something else, that means I, I miss God. And that means then I'm going to have to go around it again. Some things I just don't feel like going around no more. How about you? There's some things I just don't want to be going through the headache no more. Sin is a headache, isn't it? Anybody know that sin is a headache? It feels good in the beginning, but at the end, it's a deadly result. Psalms 40. Verse 1. The word says, I wait patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon the rock, and established my steps. He, he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. How many people have you associate with you and say, man, you're different? I get around my culture, and I feel different around them. I don't even feel like I'm part of their culture no more. You know, they, they come and talk to me. I'm like, uh, that don't seem sound right to me. <laughs> I just don't agree with that. I'm sorry. I just don't. No, no, that's not, that's not how I believe. My belief system has changed. I've been brainwashed by the Holy Spirit. I don't live on this earth no more. I'm in this earth, but I don't do the things like you think that we're supposed to do on this earth. I'm a living vessel for the Holy Spirit. I look at all cultures as the same because I see God in all. In all. There's no different variation of what he does in each culture. It's what they believe in that brings unity into the body of Christ as one. We must die to ourselves. 
and endure while waiting. The Lord is the one who changes us by us being willing to want to change. It takes a willing to want to change. He can't do nothing if you don't want to be done. You have to be willing to want to be done. Amen? You can't say, Lord, I need your help. And and I'll give you my heart. Okay, you did that. Okay, thank you, Lord. I'm going to my way. That's not willing. Willing means you stay there and keep on doing what needs to be done. And waiting on the Lord don't mean that you just sit there and say, I'm waiting on the Lord. Waiting means whatever he put before you, you keep doing it until he puts something else in before your hands. Complete what's before you first. Before you, like, like, like Pastor says, before you get, when you get a, a plate of food, you finish that before you give you another meal. You finish this first. Then he'll give you another one. It's like going to, going to dry land, coming out of dry land, and going back in. Because every time you come out, there's a prize waiting for you. He got a crown for you. But you don't take that, you give it back to him. And you keep on going. It's consistency. Just like a wheel, just keep on going. A round wheel, just keep on going, don't it? Until the brakes comes on. But it just keep on rolling. And if anything breaks on it, guess what? then it's not doing its purpose, what it's made to do. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2. I will wait for you, Lord. When you say that to him, though, he'll test you. He will test you. A lot of people don't want to talk about this, uh, uh, having patience. I, don't, I know I have talked to people and said, I, I like all the fruits, but the, that fruit of patience, I don't like that one. I don't like that one. Well, guess what? You don't like the Lord then. Because God was patient on you. You got to have patience. Sometimes patience will stop you from doing it. Well, I'm about to talk about that. Second Timothy two twenty one. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified. What does sanctified mean? Set apart. And useful for the master. Prepared for what? Every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, Love, peace with those who call on the Lord with a what? Pure heart. pure heart. Has anybody asked God for a pure heart? Lord, incline in me a pure heart. Incline in me a pure heart. Because with a pure heart, you can hear God. You can see God. You can be tangible of knowing what's clean and unclean. Because you're going to try to Keep your heart pure. You're not going to allow any contamination to come in there. Because with a pure heart, you have peace. You have peace. Anybody have had peace and lost it? No? I have. I had the peace. I took it for granted and lost it. Then I was crying for peace again. Because I didn't like the way it felt without the peace. Peace is good. Peace is, especially the peace that passes all understanding. When you have that peace right there, you ain't got to figure it out. All you got to do is trust them. Even when it feels like it's not working, that's when he's working. Hmm. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach what? Patience. Patience. So if you are not patient, how are you going to teach somebody else how to be patient in their circumstance? If you're all bouncing all over the place and then you see somebody that needs to have patience, you can't minister about patience if you don't have it. 
You have to have it to give it. And humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them what? Repentance. We all have the ability to repent and get cleansed again. Father, I repent and cleanse me with the blood of Jesus and fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may be one with you, my mind, spirit, soul, body, and flesh, and my emotions. Amen? Amen. Cleanse me, Lord. Fill me. Because when you, the blood goes before the what? The spirit. And then when he does that, you still wait on him. Get your instructions. What need to be done. And if you can't hear him, you just keep doing what is before you that he already put before you. It'll end. Trust me. Because God's always trying to bring new to you. New. 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 Now, let me finish this. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do what? So Satan has a will too. He has a will, a purpose, and a plan for us. And that is to kill, to steal, and destroy. And he does a good job of it. Because it says that in the last days, even the elect will be full. So it's our job to keep that relationship with Christ and allow nothing else to interfere with that. So that when he does come, we'll be waiting for him. Amen? Amen. Do not hang around those who don't call on the Lord with a pure heart. We never stop learning. It's, you never stop learning. There's always a place to learn. When you stop learning, you, you stop growth. You stop growth. Must be patient even when you make decisions. There are things you don't want to do, but it will be bad if you did them. If you, because there's things, that, there's things that we all want to do, but it could be a bad outcome if we put, put it forth because it wasn't the Lord and the enemy had a, a trap waiting there, waiting. And, you know, he don't does, do things big. You know how the enemy come? In the small things. Just like Peter, he said, Peter, Satan said he wanted to sift you like wheat. That's what he does to us. You, you miss prayer one day. He's sifting you. You, you miss, he tells you to worship and you don't feel like it. He's sifting you. Next thing you know, you don't, you, you don't feel it right away. But eventually, you start feeling empty and wondering what's going on with you. Because he does it when you can't feel it. That's deception. He just does it slowly. So you, because if you feel it, you go, oh, I got to do something. So he tried to lullaby you to sleep. So you can't see no more. So you can't hear no more. And then when it's too late, then you got to, that's when you have to call on, on the Lord for help. Now he has to be your savior again. Instead of being your father. Let's go to Psalm 6. Waiting on the Lord. Fruit of patience. It's a fruit. It's a good fruit. To me, it might taste like a peach. <laughs> it's a good fruit. <laughs> the juice coming down. <laughs> Psalm 6, verse 7. 
My eyes waste away because of grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquities, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and be greatly troubled. Let them turn back and be ashamed suddenly. Patient is waiting and enduring and being still so that you know that he's God. That you know that he's God being still. Okay, Lord, I'm going to wait on you. Being patient. Psalm 6. Oh, we're here still. Amen. Okay, let's go to verse 12. I got to find myself. Um, okay, I'm like pastor. I put the wrong scripture down. <laughs> All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. First Corinthians two. Verse nine. But as it's written, eyes has not seen, nor ears heard, nor have entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things to, with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So many lose sight and get complacent and go back to the world. If you don't have fellowship with the Spirit of God, how will you know the deep things of God? The unbelievers are swayed by false promises. They're swayed by false promises. Because the enemy promises us things too. And, but they're false. So that means he could bring confirmation. He could bring, first he could bring revelation. Then he could bring confirmation. But you'll never see the manifestation. It's a false one. God always brings the manifestation. If he spoke it, it shall be done. They believe, <laughs> you know, they believe that they done did their duty. So people that think that they did enough for God and say, I'm completed, my, what I need to do, I'm done. I did what God needed me to do. I can do what I did. They believe that they didn't did their duty. Don't know that God ain't finished. There's still more. Just like that song we sing, I need more of you. There's more. There's always more that he wants to produce out of you and bring quality out of you so that when others see you, they see more of the purification of him in you. They see how more you're sanctified and separated apart and still being you. You ain't got to walk around with your head up and think that you're all holy and all doubt, though. Just being the person that God called you to be is what he called for. You're you're a different individual that he made you uniquely and wonderfully made. So you don't have to act like somebody else. Be who you are, but be holy in it. Be sanctified in it. Be glorious for him in it. Be real. Because that's what God made you to be, real. Not fake. Be real. Because he already sees it. You already know what you're doing if you're trying to be fake. So be real with them. 
If you're struggling, be real with them. Let them know what's going on. She said, call upon me. I want to be your helper. I want to be your fortress. I want to be your stronghold, your strong tower. That's what he wants. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 16. He's a jealous God. You know that, right? I, I explain, I'll, I'm going to explain this. This is, how, this is how I see it. God created me. He's my father. Now Satan comes, comes in and comes in the door. He's the rapist. Because he's, what he's trying to do is steal, kill, and destroy everything that God had supplied for me. So I call him the rapist because he's trying to take away everything that, that's what the rapist does when he, when he does his thing. He takes away. He's not giving nothing. He's taking. So that's how I see him as. So that's how come I stay close to my father so I stay protected from that. So it cannot take away anything that he's trying to, to provide me and bring my future and hope into Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is the man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange of his soul? Who, who exchanged their promises? Nobody remember who exchanged it? It was a man back in the day that took a ration of porridge, or what his brother, Jacob's brother, Esau. He exchanged his promise for a, a bowl of stew. Yeah. He exchanged it. He gave it away for something that was temporary. And it wasn't real. Because after it was done, he flushed it out. <laughs> so it was only there for not even a moment compared to God. So we can't, so let's not exchange what God already has established in us and give it away. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his own work. We must deny ourselves, get a new life. That's what we came for, right? A new life. So when the old life is trying to call you back, don't answer it. Because that's old. You won't fit back in that picture no more. That fit, picture changed. And everything you try to force yourself into, it's not going to work. It's going to look like it, but you ain't going to fit in it. Because that's old. You're becoming new each day. New. Pick up our cross. Fulfill his call. Then do his will. Then you can submit to God. Resist the devil, and then he'll flee from you. Amen? Let's get ready for communion, and let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word and your truth. Lord, I ask that as we heard your word, that it be inclined within us and through us, that we may complete the task that you have set before us, and in anything that we try to do out of what you're asking us to do, I ask, Lord, to bring conviction quickly so that we can come in line to what you want us to complete 
so that you make it glory out of it. Because, Lord, you want glory out of all that we do. As we sing glory to you, Lord, we want to give you the glory. So we praise you, we honor you, and we magnify you for what you have brought us out of and what you are bringing us to. In Jesus' name, amen.